Welcome to part 2 of the character mocap workflow between Blender, Character Creator 4, and iClone 8. If you missed part 1, you can find it in the description section. From part 1, we left off making weight map adjustments to the character mask. Let's continue from there. The mask is stretching because it is weighted to different bones next to the neck and chest. We want the mask to be almost 100% weighted to the head bone. Select the mesh in the viewport and click Skin Weights. From the Bones Manager, find and select the head bone. Selecting the head bone will show colors on the mesh, which represents the weight value of the bone's influence on the mesh. We will focus on making the rigid areas of the mask 100% weighted by the head bone. At 100% influence, we will turn the colors of the affected area white. The mask is broken up into disconnected parts. Select a point on the mask and grow the selection. Then go to Quick Replace and select 1, which is 100%. Do this a few times until almost all the mask is set to 1. Now run a few test animations to see if everything is working. This looks good. Make sure iClone is installed and let's export the character out. Go to File, Export, send to iClone. You can also save the file as an iAvatar file, which can be opened in iClone. The character should be loaded in iClone. Find a mocap you like and double click it to load it onto your character. In my case, I'm using the hand-to-hand -hand combat pack. I'm going to duplicate my character and load a counterpart animation. Now adjust the distance so that the characters are spaced appropriately. After you are happy with the animation, save the file. We will now export the animation back to Blender. First, select both characters, then go to File, Export, Export FBX. Make sure to select Blender as the target tool preset. Select all for the animation range and you can leave the rest of the boxes unchecked since we will reload the character materials from Blender. Give it a good, understandable name. With the export completed, we will now bring the animation into Blender and load in the materials from the original mesh file. In Blender, go to File, Import, FBX. Locate the FBX file from iClone. Check Automatic Bone Orientation to have the bones appear correctly. Your character will come into Blender without any textures. We'll fix this by using the original Blender character mesh file used in part 1 of the video. There should be 6 materials. Click File, Append, and find the Blender character mesh file. Navigate to Material and import the appropriate materials. If the imported materials have the same name as an existing material, 
it will increment the name. In this case, my importer materials have a 0.002 name attached to the end. Now replace all the materials for both character. Open the shader editor and double check the materials. Save your work. Clean out any data that is now unused by using recursive unused data blocks, recursive unused linked data blocks, and recursive unused local data blocks. In my case, I'm using Octane as my render engine, and we'll check to make sure that it is selected. Set up your camera and double check your animation. Run the Octane Preview Render. The color looks washed out because the view transform for Octane needs to be set to raw. Save your work. After you have rendered out the animation, you should have something like this for your result. That's the end of this brief overview of Blender, CC4, and iClone workflow. If you like this video, I would appreciate a like and a sub. Until next time.